Hey everybody, Corey from CY Learning here in the Coaches Hangout. I'm shooting this video today as a response to a submission we received from a Teresa about a question on stock splits. Now, many students find the concept of stock splits and consolidations pretty tricky, but little do they know if they've ever gone to a bank to make change, they already know how to do this. It's actually pretty easy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you why. First, take a look at this tricky question from CY's exam preparation tools. This is the one that Teresa was asking about. In this scenario, we're told that George owns 100 ABC co-shares. Um, they have a market value of $20 per share, and ABC is just on a two-for-one stock split. And we're being asked how many shares he'll have, how much each share will be worth, and what the total value of his investment will be after the split. Pretty confusing, right? Well, let's step away from this question just for a moment. In this video, I'm going to cover the following three things. Number one, why would a company even do a stock split or consolidation for that matter in the first place? Number two, I'll go over a neat little trick that'll make these questions so much easier for you. And then number three, I'll circle back to the question so we can attack it together. Okay, so first, why would a company even do a stock split or consolidation? Well, companies generally don't want their price to go too low, which probably doesn't surprise you, or too high. Let me exaggerate a little bit. If a company's share price declined to, say, 20 cents, well, that doesn't exactly instill investor confidence. In fact, it would be referred to as a penny stock, and by definition, those are generally considered, based on price alone, to be a speculative investment. On the other hand, if the price increases to say $250 per share, well, that would actually make it too expensive for most investors to buy what's called a standard trading unit of 100 shares. 100 shares at $250 a piece means it would take $25,000 to buy a full trading unit. Now, one way a company can address these concerns is by adjusting its share price through a consolidation if the price is too low, or a stock split if the price is too high. All right, next up, here's the neat little trick that I referenced at the top of this Coach's Hangout video. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone into the bank to make change? I'm, I'm sure you have, but let's put some numbers on it. Let's say you wanted to split a $20 bill into two bills. In other words, a two for one split. Well, what would you get? Well, you'd of course get two $10 bills. You'd have twice as many bills, but each one of those bills would be worth half as much as the old bill. And of course, two $10 bills still equals 20 bucks. On the other hand, if you go into the bank to consolidate two $10 bills into one, and we'd call that a one for two consolidation, well, what would you have then? Well, of course, you'd have one $20 bill. So in other words, you'd have half as many actual bills in your hand before you had two 10s and now you only have one 20, but that bill would be worth twice as much as each one of those old bills. Once again, it, you know, $20. Do you see what I mean? This concept is actually fairly simple when you think about it. And it's, it's something you've probably been doing most of your life without even realizing it. So with all this in mind, let's circle back to that challenging exam prep question that Teresa was asking about before. Let me get that up on the screen here for you. Okay, so first things first, we can immediately and easily eliminate two of these answers just by asking ourselves, how much was George's investment worth before the split? So before the split took place, he had uh, 100 shares worth $20 a piece for a total of $2,000. So keep in mind our making change analogy. When you left the bank after you changed your bills, you still have the same amount of money in your pocket. Sure, you have a different number of actual bills, but the value in total of your bills is the same. So with this logic in mind, we can eliminate answers A and D. He had $2,000 before the split, so he's going to have $2,000 after the split, not $4,000 as in answers A and D. That'd be great if that's the way it worked, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Okay, now with a two-for-one split, and we've talked about this a little bit, obviously, but you get two shares for every one you've had, so you're going to end up with twice as many shares. For clarity though, if it were a three for one split, we'd have three times as many. A four for one split, four times as many. 10 for one split, 10 times as many, and so on. So with a two for one split, his 100 shares would become 
200 shares, but each one of those shares would be worth half as much. So instead of $20 per share, they'd each be worth $10. This would of course mean that the total value of George's investment would be uh, 200 shares at $10 a piece is $2,000. So this suggests that the answer is C. Let's go ahead and click that. Perfect, and we got it, excellent. Okay. As you can see, everybody, this concept is actually pretty easy. It just takes some, some good coaching and a little bit of practice, which of course you'll get when working with the CY Learning Exam Prep Tools. Thanks everybody. I really hope you found this video helpful. Keep those submissions coming and good luck on your upcoming exam.